Exercise provides a higher quality of life and mental health benefits while also showing protective effects against a wide assortment of diseases, ranging from type 2 diabetes and metabolic disorders to certain types of cancers. One interpretation of this protective effect considers skeletal muscle as the largest secretory organ in the body. In this video, I discuss how myocytes respond to exercise stress by secreting small signaling proteins known as myokines, a subclass of cytokines secreted specifically by muscle cells. In order, I will discuss 1. The stress of exercise on muscle cells and myokine release, 2. Cytokine receptors and signaling, and 3. The molecular properties of cytokines. One characteristic of disease and illness is that their inflammatory states release chemical stress mediators that elicit the body's immune response. Keeping in mind that exercise muscle is by nature in an inflammatory state, one might ask what exactly the biochemical basis of stress caused by exercise is. That is to say, what stresses muscle cells and how do they signal this stress to the immune system? Well, one model suggests that myokines are released in response to increased calcium concentrations in the cytosol of contracting muscle cells. And here, basically what happens is that the contraction involves an action potential that induces a conformational change in a voltage-sensitive protein. This in turn alters the conformation of the calcium channel nearby, which opens up and allows calcium to flow in. So essentially what we're seeing here is that calcium cation uptake is characteristic of contracting myocytes, and this may be the main biochemical basis for a stress response for myocytes. These high calcium concentrations lead to the activation of P38 MAP kinase and calcineurin, which result in upregulated myokine transcription factors in the nucleus. This model, supported by Bustamante and colleagues in the recent 2014 paper in the American Journal of Physiology. Here, they show a model for myokine secretion where ATP's stimulation of this signaling cascade provokes calcium uptake. The calcium cations then mediate myokine gene expression in the nucleus. And once these myokine proteins are translated from the mRNA, they're secreted from the cells via vesicles. And I'll mention it here since we'll be talking about it in a few minutes, but these released cytokines may act either again on the same cell as an autocrine response, or the cytokine might go into the blood system and act on a distant cell as an endocrine response. So on that note, it's also worth noting that different levels of exercise lead to different levels of myokines. And this is pretty easy to imagine, you know, different levels of exercise will consume different amounts of ATP, resulting in varying degrees of calcium uptake. And it's those different concentrations of calcium that will express myokines differently. So if it's these myokines that are giving us the ex exercise protection from certain diseases in distant parts of the body, it's going to soon become a topic of discussion of what levels of exercise might be feasible in a patient whose disease might be physically debilitating. The receptors for myokines may be found on many different cell types, but basically what we see here is that the receptor for a cytokine has two portions, an extracellular cytokine binding domain and an intracytoplasmic domain to bind to Jack, which is a protein tyrosine kinase. When there is no cytokine present, the two parts of this receptor are separated, but when the cytokine binds, the dimerized forms stabilize and the Jacks become phosphorylated, and in turn phosphorylate the receptor's tail. This summons signaling transduction and transcription molecules, also known as STAT molecules, which upon dimerization can go directly into the nucleus to regulate the transcription of proteins that will respond accordingly to the stress signal. There are several distinctions between hormones and cytokines that I should clarify. One is that cytokines can be released by a variety of cell types. Earlier I talked about muscle cells releasing myokines, for example. Hormones, on the other hand, generally come from one specialized cell type. Second, hormones always affect locations distant from their point of secretion. Cytokines might have this type of endocrine activity, but they also very well may have an effect on the same cell that secreted it as an autocrine response. Third, cytokines usually circulate at picomolar concentrations and increase dramatically with stress or infection, while hormones typically circulate in the nanomolar range. Finally, and I think most importantly, cytokines have a wide range of effects depending on the type of cell receiving the signal. For example, cytokines may act reciprocally to agonize or antagonize the production of other cytokines that will either 
can interact or magnify their response to the first cytokine. This is where this type of research gets really confusing, because the effects of cytokines vary severely in the context of the cell processing the signal, and oftentimes many inflammatory or anti-inflammatory cytokines are involved. Interleukin-6 is commonly described as a prototype cytokine. Here we see that it's a protein dimer made of two identical monomers. IL-6, as it's otherwise known, has been shown to have proliferative capacities in muscle stem cells, meaning that it may foster an environment that leads to muscle regeneration and hypertrophic growth. This is an interesting capacity of the myokine because it is commonly found in concentrations higher than any other myokine in stress-stimulated myocytes. Munoz, Canovas, and colleagues also write that IL-6 may regulate energy metabolism, control metabolic function, and stimulate glucose production. Keeping these assorted effects of IL-6 in mind may provide insight into the protective effects of exercise against the variety of diseases mentioned at the beginning of this video. Since exercise often implicates a substantial amount of muscle cell mass, such as thigh and calf skeletal muscles during running, myokine signaling molecules are released into the bloodstream in such quantities that affect all parts of the body. For this reason, it might very well be that myokines are at least in part responsible for the protective effects of exercise.